A very good evening to everyone. On behalf of Oakbridge Publishing and our technology partner, Lawyer, I extend a warm welcome to our dignitaries and the audience joining us from different parts of the country. We are proud to present today's discussion with advocate Puneet Bhaseen on understanding online gaming and gambling laws in India. Advocate Puneet Bhaseen is a pioneer in cyber laws, data privacy and protection, and online entertainment laws in India, and is the most sought after legal practitioner in this space. We are proud to have her as our author. We are also grateful to Mr. Damandev Sood for joining us today as the moderator for this discussion. Mr. Sood has over 35 years of experience in the industry and is a renowned resilience trainer and consultant. In today's day and age, the internet and technology have become an essential utility in our lives. It is often used to create opportunities as well as to perpetrate mischief. Much like everything else, the online gaming and gambling industries have undergone tremendous technological transformation, offering myriad products and experiences to all age groups. However, this transformation has also led to multiple issues adversely affecting people's lives, at times leading to loss of life as well. Through our discussion today, we aim to understand the evolution of online gaming and gambling in India, the legal framework that regulates it, the challenges faced in regulating it, and the possible solutions that could be implemented. While these activities are conducted in the virtual world, they impact real life, real people in the real world. It therefore becomes crucial for the law to keep pace with technological advancements such that it benefits can be made widely available to the people, while at the same time, the adverse impact can be mitigated. Without much ado, I now invite Mr. Sood to open the discussion. Thanks, Priyanka. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Puneet. Good evening. And I would like to take extra two minutes to talk about Puneet because we must understand this and there's a lot to be talked about her. Evening is about her, Advocate Puneet Basin. She's a pioneer in cyber laws in India. She's an advisor to the Rajya Sabha committees on internet laws and a recipient of five national awards for contribution in cyber laws. One of them being best cyber law in India from late Sri Ram Jait Mailani. Puneet is a well-known author in cyber laws and her articles are published routinely in newspapers and online portals, whereby she shares her views on issues and latest updates in the digital crimes and privacy space. She's also routinely featured on leading news channels like BBC, CNBC, Z News, DD News, etc., for her views and recommendations. Ms. Puneet launched CyberJure Academy in 2018 to develop industry skill set in EU GDPR compliance, cyber laws, cyber crime investigation, and data protection compliances, and till date has trained over 400 CXOs and professionals. She is a mentor to over 4,000 aspiring professionals and law students all over the globe whom she guides with over 400 plus clients globally she's aiming she's among the most sought after and trusted lawyer in the cyber laws and privacy matters let's start Puneet. first question that comes to mind is people are not comfortable about this topic are mm -hmm. we gambling by talking about it are we taking some risk? Well, actually, uh, the term gambling uh, has gained a lot of, uh, you could say, negative uh, uh, connotation. When in actuality, if you see whether it may be the Mahabharata, uh, it was like a routine game of play. It's just that, yes, when it goes out of control, when the stakes are involved in terms of money or where you do not know where to stop, that is where the major issue comes. So even in India, when we are talking about gambling, it is primarily where there are games played with money, which are purely games of chance. 
and that to legally you are allowed to indulge in gambling games in india again the kind of games uh, that matters a lot and secondly also if the organization which is hosting these games has proper licenses for the same so definitely it is not something which is taboo it is not something which is negative uh, it all depends if it is done within the purview of the legal framework taman well said but i'm Happily surprised that Mahabharata came into picture in these discussions. Thanks. So please tell us uh, what is the difference between online gaming and online gambling. Well, see, gaming is when you are playing any particular game, which may be skill, which may be chance, but you have nothing much in terms of a monetary perspective to lose. So, where you are not betting any money in that fashion. the definition gambling comes into play where the outcome of the game is not determined by your skill but by pure chance in a game for example in casino games you put a coin and then you just uh, you, let's say you know move the uh, handle and it, it there are multiple rolls that go through and then depending upon your luck based on that which roll it stops you get the points or you get the coins out so that's what we call purely chance so when you are talking about gambling it is something which is purely chance and it involves some amount of monetary uh, ramification later on based on what you have put within it so if your luck is good you earn a lot of money if your luck is bad you may end up losing a lot of money that is the distinction between gaming and gambling but there are multiple games of skill which let's say games like poker there are multiple such games which are classified as games of skill by the law in india and that can be played with money because that doesn't involve pure chance so just the fact that you're playing with money doesn't make a game a gambling activity okay. that's something for you to understand many times games which are legally allowed can be played with money provided they are games of skill and they do not require any additional licenses either all right are you a mind reader also apunit ah uh, no no <laughs> but i am not sure most okay. people do ask this question uh, that's why i am aware of this <laughs> you just touched upon my next question also <laughs> my way of saying pride versus prize when mm-hmm. i compete for just pride it's legal my understanding mm-hmm. i'm saying the moment a prize or prize gets associated it becomes illegal am i right in such thinking uh to some extent yes but it also has a component of skill so if you're playing something which involves skill or involves chance that is one of the key factors to determine whether it's a game or it's a gambling activity mm-hmm. so can we say that there's a fine line between these two we have been using this term a lot many times in the management board houses uh, board rooms etc Uh, yes it's a very fine line like even today there are multiple games if you are aware there is litigation going on about whether ludo is a game of skill or is it a game of chance so many people will say there is skill involved you just don't make a house and uh, uh, complete the game first uh, without any skill and many people will say it's pure luck whether you you get a throw of six or not and then there are multiple variations of ludo today Right. so there are multiple aspects to determine the level of skill how much of skill and whether you would really constitute that to be gambling then Yes, including me, I would have thought. I used to think that Ludo was a game of chance. Okay, no, there are multiple variants which are games of skill also, okay. and uh, uh, it depends upon multiple factors. So yes, it's still under deliberation by the court, and uh, uh, th- there are many such games, and there are many games which are today available on mobile applications also okay. to play. And... Which is a new challenge. Mobile applications have been posing new yes. challenges. I'll come to that question a little later, Puneet. Uh, is online gaming and online gambling legal in the world well in the world there are multiple nations where online gambling is absolutely legal okay there are nations where online gaming obviously uh, is uh, most nations it is legal except for where there are certain uh, you could say provisos added wherein you know there are games which involve let's say sexually explicit activities violence these kind of games definitely which contain objectionable content there are nations which are regulating those games in india we don't have any explicit law to regulate gaming uh, in india like let's say there's no separate law that says that oh you can ban a particular game under so and so category of law we are just using the provisions of the indian penal code we are not having any separate laws for the same but yes globally there are separate laws for gaming there are separate laws for gambling and in india also we have uh, laws with respect to gambling where in certain uh, states gambling is legally allowed you have to obtain a license for the same 
in certain other states gambling is absolutely banned and also india being such a demographic uh, every state considers different games as game of skill so what is interesting is let's say if state a in india says that uh, poker is a game of skill state b uh, may have the opinion it is a game of chance so based on where you are hosting the games that becomes a very very important factor considering uh, the state laws on this subject are drastically different because uh, uh, online gaming and gambling is a state subject and not a, a subject of the union list okay so once again you have read my mind this would have been an extension of the question is online gaming gambling legal in india and you have said yes in different states they uh, are different it is legal in india in certain places illegal in india in certain places certain ways of presentation of the game may be legal certain ways of presentation would be illegal so it all depends upon the facts of each individual case okay and the following question for me then is why and how are these rules different in different states of the same country Oh, uh, see, as I was mentioning, uh, in India, for legislations, we have the uh, the union sub, uh, the union list, the state list, and then there is a list in which commonly both the union and the state can uh, make legislations. Uh, gaming and gambling comes in the state list, which means uh, the union government doesn't make legislations with respect to the subject. So every state is free to regulate it on its own. Now that is one of the key reasons why every state has different laws pertaining to online gambling. some states have absolutely legalized it some states have uh, held it to be absolutely banned in their uh, uh, in their jurisdiction so it's purely based on the perspective of uh, the state the people uh, the people in power in the state so it's a combination of everything okay so a little more pony this is not clear to me uh, who said where has been this been written that this online gaming gambling is a state uh, matter is it written in constitution of india or where uh, yes in the constitution of india so normally uh, if you will see in the constitution of india there is a, a part which clearly bifurcates which are the subjects on which uh, uh, the state can legislate which subjects the union can legislate and on which subjects both can jointly le legislate okay. so this kind of a thing is there to ensure that you know there aren't clashes between the union and the state governments so that's one of the reasons why this kind of bifurcation is there but if you will ask my opinion uh, Uh, when gambling uh, should have been ideally a state subject when it it was completely limited to gambling houses like you had to physically go somewhere and gamble right. today we are looking at online gambling uh, having it as a state subject has a lot of disadvantages because people from one state are playing uh, games on an application which may be hosted in another state so i think today it's more of a union uh, list subject it should be a union list subject and uh, there has to be a common law for the entire nation it they cannot be state wise law so it it's a bit i would say a uh, half hazard at this point of time okay and then the moment we say this is not so much structured you said half hazard mm -hmm. so will you be able to throw some light on what is being done if there is some work being done in this um in in this well uh, there are considerations happening at the union level on this also but uh, you need to understand every state has a very different mentality and uh, taking away a state subject is not that easy so uh, you need to understand any legislation which is even proposed by the government has vehement amount of opposition also that is always going to be there so in such a situation you're not just proposing a law you're pulling out a subject from the state list and trying to legislate on it at the union level so that is very very complicated so what uh, what we can see right now primarily is that uh, uh, the government is trying to legislate on subjects in the union list itself and in whatever ways we can try to legislate upon this subject uh, without having to pull it out of the state list okay Uh, an extension of the question punit is this state versus center if it becomes uh, in this arena also all in gaming and gambling uh, specifically we are talking of india is it going to be same tussle or why the states would have objection as we say every cigarette packet has that warning it's injurious to health or the alcohol is not good for health but we still keep producing why don't we stop so it's like a mindset of some states see for example you will see uh some particular states are open and freely providing liquor licenses some states are dry states mindset of the state you see goa it's open to gambling you are allowed to you can take a license and you can go about actually opening a gambling house same way for sikkim nagaland multiple other states and then you have karnataka which is looking to absolutely ban it so 
you it, it's purely the mindset of the ruling party purely the mindset of the people out there because the party is also a representation of uh, the people out there what is their mindset towards this kind of a subject right or is it all about money honey it could be a possibility of, that too, a yes. of money out of cigarettes and, and uh, liquor production and usage etc yeah i'll tell you uh, for any government to allow gambling is going to increase revenue for them big time but uh, the reason that many governments probably do not choose to is not primarily in my perspective a monetary uh, um, uh, you could say determinant it is primarily the mindset of the people mindset of the legislative uh, bodies in that particular state mindset of the common man in that particular state all right great thanks paneet let's change gear a little bit one name that comes to mind is kbc famous in india so the question that comes to mind is is kbc and other programs of that sort are an online game and is it legal india oh well yes it is legal it's not gambling it's gaming and you're not really putting money into it so yes as long as the winners are playing paying all the taxes and it's done legitimately it is a legal activity so i was saying uh, the pride versus price mm -hmm. in kbc while i'm not putting my money but i understand perhaps i have to pay also to join mm -hmm. all right so i'm putting some money to be there even in audience for example but specifically if 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 i'm playing and if i'm winning then there is price so that becomes gambling no but there is skill there is skill here the okay. money so okay. where you're not going to win the money without you having an application of your mind so there is a lot of skill element that is involved in this um but what question do i get is chance isn't it see uh, that is a that they are not playing with the normally see what tends to happen is how the courts view it is they weigh where the skill is more or the chance is more okay so if the chance level is more and your skill level is very less then it gets classified as a gambling activity okay so has there any been uh, has there been any discussions on this point kbc is one example only that comes easy, easily mm -hmm. to mind that this is like neat clean okay legal mm -hmm. ethical have there been any discussions around this or it's just first time i'm raising such points here uh no see kbc and all nobody has ever questioned for that matter of fact mm -hmm. uh with respect to other games yes there has been a lot of judicial determination also deliberation on this subject on you know how is it that we are going to weigh uh, the uh, the level of chance the level of skill you know it, when we are talking about the amount of chance being more than the amount of skill or skill being more than chance you know these are all very very subjective terms out here so in a game i may believe there is more skill and chance but let's say somebody else may believe there is more uh, um, uh, skill in that so uh, or may more chance in that so what tends to happen is that it is based on a lot of perspective so for a lot of judicial deliberation that has happened in this is tried is the entire agenda has been to draw up some common framework some kind of common guidelines that can be used to determine what would constitute skill really what is actually a determinant of skill and what is purely a determinant of chance so this kind of a determination and they could say a checklist format that almost every judicial body today is trying to do that even in the cases which are before the high courts uh, they are trying to build some kind of let's say a uh, 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 go to the blackboard methodology for any individual organization to understand is my game uh, uh, constituting gambling is it purely a game so everybody is trying to come out with that one formula by which you can uh, you know apply though that has not happened as yet there are multiple judgments but there is no clear formula which is still to be determined so due to that reason it becomes difficult for a common man because there is no thermometer it's subjective <laughs> all right um, that's the challenge a person like me anyone we citizens would have in the country how to make it easy for the people well see i'll tell you there are a lot of applications in games which are today um, you know the, uh, if you know about the case there was a case filed against dream 11 also and okay. uh, the judiciary determined dream 11 is a game of skill now today so many other applications are also going to get up and say if that is skill why not mine being skill now here the concept of it being subjective the subject matter of every game is different so each game practically right now at this point of time is being weighed in its own individual capacity mm -hmm. by the judicial bodies 
So okay. it's very difficult. I'm I'm telling you for even a common man to determine if the judiciary takes so much time to determine this for a common man also it's ab absolutely impossible to determine whether or not there's genuine skill. But uh uh, one thing that uh, we need to be quite, uh, uh, you could say, optimistic about is that in the near future, there are going to be very clear guidelines for this. Okay. So who are these interested parties? We use this term in management systems these days, interested parties, which used to be stakeholders in the past, while the meaning is much more than that. Interested parties involved in this. When we say it's subjective, someone will do it for me. Someone will decide. Is it the judge, the police inspector, or the, uh, the judges? The judges. So the judiciary. Right now, a lot of games, like for example, if you know about Ludo, uh, there is a game that is uh, there is a case that's going on in the Bombay High Court with respect to Ludo also as oh. to whether or not Ludo is a game of skill or is the game of chance. Mm. The same thing. See, I'll tell you, each and every game today is coming up before the judiciary one by one. In their own individual capacity. The same thing happened to Dream 11. After Dream 11, judgment that it's a legal game, fantasy games are legally allowed in India that doesn't constitute gambling, even if it's played with money. Mm -hmm. So you have so many other games which are working in the same format, which can legally operate today. In India. So it's, it's like each and every game being picked out. If somebody files a legislation against them, then the whole question of judicial determination by the courts comes up. And that's when the whole thing about whether it's legal or not. Now, till that doesn't happen, you need to understand a lot of these games are facing a lot of backlash. So whether mm -hmm. it's gaming or gambling, what tends to happen is any person who loses money is going to approach the police stations. Mm -hmm. They're going to file police complaints. And there is a lot of backlash that you do face because there's no clarity. Mm -hmm. Are you really a game of skill? Are you a game of chance? There's no clarity, which means, yes, the police involvement is there. All of that is there on a routine basis for these organizations to deal with. Okay, thanks, Baneet. The next one that comes to mind is, then does the lottery fall into the same category? Is it game? Is it gamble? Online the lottery is purely gamble. So every state has separate laws with relation to lottery also, and that is considered purely gambling. There is no uh, element of chance out there. Okay. Uh, and, and then we talk, talk of chance and skill. Do we mix speculation also along with that? For example, yes, speculation is also purely chance. A dream IPL team is my speculation. It's not chance. Oh, uh, well, it's, 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 it's not just speculation, Daman. It is actually you uh, understanding the player's capabilities and making a team. So, so that's skill. speculation I'm saying. You're taking it towards skills, you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. So my skill of looking at who could be a good player and selecting the team according the yes. dream team accordingly. Okay, thank you. My general impression, Puneet, had been that no one has ever got those prizes of one lakh or one crore, etc., from buying soaps and petrol, etc. Mm -hmm. Do those schemes also fall into the same category that we have been talking about this evening? I see all these huge prizes that are there. Nobody, see, honestly, in all these kind of uh... Unless there's a high level of transparency, nobody really knows who has won that huge amount of price. That's what I'm raising, yes. So That's a that transparency is a very different question because many times it may never happen that anybody wins that or whether or not it's genuinely given. But yes, a lot of these games, let's take the example of the ones on the cricket premier leagues, the number of games which are playing with respect to this subject. Uh, you need to understand if they are sustaining and they are playing for such a long duration, they cannot play with people's money for that long. So if people have won a match with the same team that they had selected and all of that has happened, uh, the organization cannot really escape from paying money because that will also mean uh, them risking their reputation at that point of time. And if these organizations have been sustaining till now, which means to a great extent they are fulfilling their promises. A question, especially when we are talking of this, maybe this is not gaming gambling, Puneet, but a little link to that, I'll still say. <laughs> A good car which is sold for about five rupees or so, I believe. I don't know exactly. I'm assuming mm -hmm. five rupees. And they say uh, one crore rupees. How is this possible if they are not fooling people or if this is not a game of luck, which is towards gambling? Uh, I didn't understand your question, actually. Though. I'm saying they keep advertising good car, for mm -hmm. example, right? That there is some scheme and you could win one crore rupees. Good car mm -hmm. is a game very low price maybe five rupees i don't even yes. know right so how could they do that it seems do they make so much do they sell so much that they could even offer one crore rupees year on year or oh yes definitely. Definitely. Some gambling, the people who use gutka for example who, who attempt to win that lottery if we call it lottery 
See, one thing you need to understand, the uh, industry of addictions is a very, very big industry. And honestly, it's a major, wow. major one. You know. That's another topic whether for some other day. Alcohol, whether it may be tobacco, whether it may be even uh, gambling to that extent. All of these methodologies, which, uh, all of these, uh, uh, you could say, uh, parts of life, it becomes for people, it becomes absolute addictions. Getting out of them is very, very difficult. So these kind of businesses make a lot of money. It's not like you're going to have it for one day and then you won't have it the next day. So people who are addicted to cigarette smoking, uh, it's very difficult to get over that. The same way, whether it may be for drugs, the same way for alcohol. People, you know, try for years to try to get in rehabilitation and get out of these things. So uh, the amount of money involved is a lot because of uh, the human dependency that is created on something like this. And yes, addiction with respect to gaming and gambling is also there. That is also there where people uh, exactly. cannot uh, seem to stop at some point of time. Exactly. And that's why this becomes a challenge for the human beings or for the country. We would talk of India as of today, more of India. Mm -hmm. Great. So based on these discussions so far, Puneet, it appears, my understanding is that it is legal to an extent based on different states and the country also as a whole, different games, different um, options that we have, that mm -hmm. it's not too bad or is not so bad. Mm -hmm. But if I play or participate in the commitment and the commitment by the organizer is not fulfilled, you have just touched upon that, but I, I'm expanding this question. Mm -hmm. The commitment by the organizer is not fulfilled. What options do I have, if any? Is there any regulatory framework to help me? Or if I get indulged in these illegal activities, wherever it is illegal, who can catch me? How and what could be the implications? Maybe the question has become very long. You can break into pieces and then attempt to respond. Yeah. I would take it in two parts. The first part about, uh, you know, when the organizer fails to keep promises and give you the prize money, uh, you need to understand that out here in 99.99% cases, it's not where you have even got the prize money. In gambling, what tends to happen is the moment a person loses a lot of money, which he has himself betted of his own free will, at that point of time, the moment he loses it. So you may not have even won that money. But the point that you have lost money itself makes it more than enough for a lot of these players to file police complaints, um, which happens on a routine basis against these organizations. So it's like in every single day, you will have hundreds of police complaints being filed, all of that happening. And yes, in the situations where genuinely there is a prize money which has not been given, uh, those number of cases are comparatively lesser for that matter of fact. And yes, you can approach the jud judicial system, you can approach the police for that also. And uh, uh, if it's a legitimate game, yes, action can be taken to recover your money. Now, about players who are playing gambling uh, uh, games online and, uh, you know, there have been multiple crackdowns that have happened in the last one and a half years. Since the lockdown, mm -hmm. actually, a large number of people have been playing online or way a lot more. I didn't and, know uh, the, the government oh. has, uh, you know, uh, further taken steps about this, wherein I'm, I'm quite sure a lot of people who were routine players, their bank accounts were sealed. So I know about a client, his 155 bank accounts were sealed. Now, uh, he was not only into playing games, but he had multiple businesses also. So uh, and of which maybe only one or two would have been where, you know, he would have played some games. But you need to understand so many bank accounts getting sealed. Uh, there were num all over India. There were bank accounts that were sealed, even of players, of organizations which are organizing such games. All of that was happening. So uh, what you need to understand is you need to be declaring the wealth that you're generating from online gaming or gambling. You need to pay your taxes on that. And yes, if your accounts do get sealed and you are contacted for questioning, it's nothing to worry. You need to really show that I have legitimately owned the money and I have legitimately paid all my dues. Okay, this is good learning for me also, Puneet. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the whole world has been talking about work from home. And I've written a lot about that, that to me it should have... Well, they've not just been work from home, Daman. They've been play from home. That I'm saying, this is new to me, which didn't come into my writing. I'll add this, that perhaps this has also been a negative impact of working from home. If people have mm -hmm. got indulged and have lost money. You know? If they are winning money in a legal game, perhaps it's okay. But if they have won or lost money, even even if I don't win, I'm indulged in, in an illegal activity, that's wrong. I could be held. Uh, that someone, was, what that happens happen in any of the online gambling uh, applications, uh, there's something called permutations and combinations in which the chances of you losing money is always higher than you winning money. 
<laughs> the okay. combination, the chances, let's say, even if you say 50 50, the amount of uh, chance that you will end up losing is more. You may win, but the chances of losing comparatively are higher, especially in multiplayer games. And also, where, uh, let's say, the games which are absolutely skill based, until and unless you're an absolute, uh, you would say, expert at that skill or really good in multiplayer games. You need to understand even in the legally allowed gambling games, which have elements of skill, uh, the chances of losing are quite high. So any person who's playing is fully aware of these chances. So you may say, I'm really good at this game. I'm skilled at this game. Right. But uh, it may still tend to happen that, you know, it's all based on, if, especially if it's multiplayer, as what I told you. Uh, you are put up against the skills of other individuals who may also be equally good or much better. Okay. So let's take a case now. Uh, Puneet. I'm sitting in Delhi. We assume when some game is not legal, it's illegal. But that game is hosted somewhere in, assume, in UP or in Mumbai, mm -hmm. in Maharashtra, right? Am I okay to do that activity, play that game, get indulged in that game? Or could I be held responsible by whom? In Delhi police? Uh, judiciary or Maharashtra judiciary, etc., etc. See, right now it's a gray area. If the okay. organization which has hosted those games does not have proper licenses, is not incorporated in an area which uh, can legally allow for gambling, uh, yes, there are crackdowns that happen even on the organization and the entire money trade, which includes the trail down to the players. Then, so uh, it depends upon all these factors. Okay, but then we also talk of the boundaryless world today. So it's not only Delhi, Maharashtra, Mumbai, UP. It could be across other countries where it's Ill, it's legal, but it's hmm. illegal in India. Mm -hmm. Then could I be held responsible if I win or lose or whatever I want to do? Oh, yes. As per international law, all those presumptions are there, especially if the parent organization which hosted the game, uh, game, if they are actually brought to book at any point of time, uh, yes, all the players also come in the fold at that point of time. So it's, uh, it, as I told you, it's an absolutely gray area. Ideally, this should be a union subject, not a state subject, considering uh, that today you do not require a physical jurisdiction for it. And internationally, there isn't any common law framework. So for players, the, it, it is highly risky. You do not know what can happen tomorrow. Yeah, so we, we were saying that it's a gray area within India yeah. states versus center. But with this boundary... India also, not just India, globally also it's a gray area, actually. Sorry, say that again, please. Globally also it's a gray area. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm asking. Yes, globally it seems then it doesn't need to be a single law in India. It seems to be there needs to be a single law across the globe now. Yes, yes. But has there been any discussion or any um, work in this direction? Uh, globally, building laws to, uh, you know, regulate online gambling, that has not really happened. As would the WTO, uh, would this fall into the, uh, the scope of WTO? See, I'll tell you, actually, the number of people playing online these games has increased post the COVID lockdown, globally. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things, see, governments are not just grappling with the COVID situation, the economies that have been uh, uh, disturbed in the nations. And then, you know, you have so many players mm -hmm. suddenly... Uh, playing online, mm -hmm. uh, all these games. So there are multiple challenges that are there. So I don't think they have really got around to thinking about this at this point of time. So we could see that this, these clouds may take long to get cleared. It will take time for there to be some common framework that can be there. Okay, good. Uh, next point, or the question that comes to mind, Puneet, is when IPRs, IPRs were being broken, it became a specialized stream in advocacy, a specialized mm -hmm. education. Similarly, there are cyber crime specialists, specialist lawyers and advocates, including you. So is online gaming, online gambling also a specialization in the legal system or could become, shall I look forward to? that education it may be it depends upon whether individuals build their skill set purely in this space see online gaming and gambling is here to stay it's going to grow big time as an industry we have seen uh last two three years people have got gotten absolutely used to using their smartphones a lot more playing games online a lot more this industry is here to stay so if people do specialize in this with actual practice and uh, good development of their skills in this space yes there's a great career in this ahead. 
So this is available readily uh, already. That's what I'm asking. Oh, there are no courses in this. Uh, so no if courses. you will ask me this question, it has been purely over the years practicing the subject that you would have gained the knowledge. So nobody can say, okay, I'm going to get a master specialization in something like this. No. So th that's what the example I was giving. IPR, a master's in IPR is available, I believe. Uh, no, here in online yeah. gambling laws or gaming laws, you're not going to get a master's. So be a, a doctorate in gambling and gaming tomorrow. Maybe 10 years, 5 years down the line, it's possible. But as of now, such stream is not available. No, because there is a lot of taboo or stigma associated with the terminologies where everybody doesn't understand gambling can be done legally in India too or globally. So there are so many things. And many times even the law enforcement doesn't understand that uh, uh, gambling can be done within a legal framework in India too. Right. That's why the opening was with this question, are to, were we too going to be in risk <laughs> would eyebrows go <laughs> high? Eyebrows would be raised. How could Funit and Daman be talking about this topic? That's why I was raising it. Not really. See, I'll tell you today, young children are playing online. And today, if we need to talk about this subject, there are people who are in all age groups play, playing these games and uh, uh, applications online. And today, if uh, this is not brought up or discussed, then I think uh, they, you know it's like just trying to put things under the carpet without uh, ever understanding them properly. Great, Puneet. And that brings to us to the next question. And I'll request you spend extra time over that because that's very sensitive and I believe that's the need of the hour uh, today. The whole society would be looking forward to that. So this one, as a parent, mm -hmm. I believe the gaming habits now start from under 10 years of age. And I may be wrong. Someone could say the one five years of age, perhaps. And I wouldn't mind. Yes. Because I know five years old, boy has been able to download and install applications on phone mm -hmm. i'm saying the gaming habits now start from under 10 years of age and they may or may not understand what is right and what is not so what yeah. advice would you give to parents and any watch words for kids and young ones please take extra time for this one i will say well i'll tell you all parents today um, what tends to happen is that you know everybody is working I also have a daughter, I know even I'm working and it's easier to give your child some device to be occupied with as compared to, you know, constantly keeping them engaged. The problem also is children today are wanting to be engaged all the time. Parents do not have the bandwidth or the time. So then in that situation, it's easier to provide them a gadget like a mobile phone or something that will keep them engaged. Uh, the risk that comes about here is that uh, they are also accessing anything and everything. Yes. Now, once they get into playing these online games and gambling activities, they are not really having uh, the sense to understand where to stop and neither do they have the acumen to understand uh, the demerits of uh, overplaying, which an adult may understand. Right. So you need to understand the only way you can actually see if you don't tell a child, I'm not going to give you the phone or then in that situation, you need to engage the child in some other way. You need to engage the child, let's say, in certain physical activities, games, or you need to have a strong family support system that can keep the kid engaged so that he's not resorting to social media, online games, and all these other online mediums to be engaged. Well, it may appear to be a little out of context, but what you said, Puneet, I still request spend a little more time. That old mm -hmm. tradition, the strong family support is the way out, it seems. So if you can... Uh in today's times, I would say, see, everybody has gone more nuclear. But what I'm seeing amongst the younger kids nowadays is the more nuclear you're getting, uh, your dependency on technology to deal with your child is increasing. Because your child doesn't have anybody to talk to comparatively. He doesn't have uh, mm -hmm. that kind of camera ready available. So all these challenges are tremendous. And um, if you will know in earlier times, like if let's say when we grew up or our parents were growing up, uh, there were so many children in the household itself giving you company. The child did not need a mobile application to play a game. He had five kids running around in the house to give him company to play pakda pakdi. So yes. today, the reason children are requiring this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, digital entertainment is because of lack of, uh, uh, you could say, the human uh, uh, availability and connect for engaging. Now, whether that may be your own cousins, children, grandparents, you know, there has to be somebody who has to do it at some point of time. And I'll tell you 100% to think parents would be able to do it. I'm sure that is never possible because you have the responsibility of earning the bread for the family also. Right. You cannot just say, I'm going to keep playing with my child. 
so then you need a supporting family system that can enable you to keep your child away from digital media till he is capable to make a sensible decision about the same great and once again a little out of context perhaps we started with online gaming gambling and we are talking of family uh, support system yeah. etc etc the age is old question or debate you would have done that in school i did that in school is mm-hmm. technology boon or bane pardon is technology a boon or bane oh uh, well i would say it's a boon it has connected the world tremendously today you see a situation like a lockdown and now economically nations have been able to come out because of technology had it been let's say 30 40 years back where there wasn't enough of technology to actually carry forward businesses uh, people would be hand to mouth today so it's a boon but again everything comes with the other side of the coin where if it's not handled properly where people right. are not uh, trained properly to make the right decisions about their usage exactly. that's when it becomes a pain exactly so shall we be looking forward to some courses coming up in teaching us how to play how to gamble etc etc <laughs> how to gamble <laughs> and how to play no that those are not the courses definitely but yes but i'm um, not I'm asking from your academy punit i'm saying in the country in the society do we look forward to some courses coming up uh, i have my doubts that would ever happen that would not happen okay uh, an old one now let's bring it you are in mumbai right mm-hmm. Uh, let's bring it to bollywood then and we have, we have heard this dialogue zindagi ek jua hai so if it's a gamble gamble shall we continue playing this or shall we stop playing this well it determines uh, it's determined a lot by the organization which is the organizer of the games how legitimate are they also it depends upon whether the game is one of skill or is it purely of chance that determines the amount of risk that you're taking so you need to consider all these factors together before you decide to play all right so still one more final thoughts i'm saying um looking at the time and we hope there are some questions from audience also we will attempt to pick up those uh final thoughts i'm saying shall we or shall we not get indulged in online gaming and gambling i would like to throw some light from ethical point of view also see from an ethical perspective everybody is free to make their own choices there's nothing called right or wrong that's my simple belief everybody uh, basically based on their own uh, life's parameters have to charter their own right and wrong uh, but when you're talking about online gaming and gambling uh, there is as i told you it's a very gray area there's nothing called right or wrong today what do we call wrong if there's a law that says that this should not be done we call it wrong till there was no law it was so called right. right so it it's a very very you could say um, uh a question which today let's say i say it's uh, uh, it's right tomorrow there's a law passed which says it's wrong then suddenly the whole world says it's wrong right. that's exactly how our minds are tuned to be we are tuned to be regulated by some legal regime certain norms social norms laws which tell us what is right and wrong so right, right. now there is no law that can tell you right or wrong about this apart from the fact that yes every state has certain determinations about what constitutes gambling or can be legally allowed or not so based on that yes there are rights and wrongs that are there but they are going to differ from one state to the other of india right uh, and then it would change or it will differ it will depend upon from person to person also yes you are a different yes. personality i am a different personality something like yes. that okay great it was uh, pleasure talking to you but before we wind up we would like to look at some questions from the audience and there's one already i'll read it out for you um, for uh-huh. it and then uh, let's see what are your views on that what criminal provisions become applicable to online gaming and gambling well there are many so what happens is it depends upon the case that is filed by the person who has lost money so i need or to where you have dropped home the wrong way so then yes under the indian penal code there is multiple amount of provisions that can be put including non bailable provisions it can start from cheating and it can go on to misappropriation of uh, money properties all of that so uh, the number of provisions that can be applied are a lot it just depends upon how sensible your advocate is to curtail and nip that in the bud and try to get the matter solved okay so there is a saying punit that to catch a thief you need to think like a thief to catch mm-hmm. a hacker you must have a hacker's mindset etc etc mm-hmm. so to be a good online gamer gambler i first must understand the uh, legal framework that we have in the country 
Oh uh, yes, yeah, so that tomorrow you don't land up in trouble because it's impossible. See, uh, uh, it's very difficult for you to not be tracked. Let's say today the organizer of the games which you regularly play, uh, they basically are doing the activity illegally. The money trail is going to be followed by the police at some point, and yes, you're going to come in the fold of that. So to some extent, due diligence is a must. Okay, <coughs> but if I attempt to do everything myself, then I may become um, jack of all, master of none. So I may say I'm a good gambler and I want to be good gambler. but i would like to hire someone who would do it for me so there are people who are playing in huge stakes they can actually get a due diligence done also but i'll tell you 99.9% nobody does a due diligence a due diligence about the organization most okay. games you are playing before i play i don't look into what this nobody organization does. what this nobody. game is okay but then that's an advice that i should attempt to yes ideally yes before i start getting in does if i want to get in does in these such activities Uh, do my due due diligence. That's what you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Thanks, uh, Priyanka. Do you have any more questions? Uh, there's one question I can see over here, Daman. Uh, please go ahead. I can't see that. Sorry. Okay. How can one check if the online site has a license to operate and who gives that license? now in some states in india where it is legal uh, the organization or the company that is uh, uh, hosting these online games and has started the application they have to take the license from the state governments there are departments for the same there is a process to get a clearance they have to take it from there and uh, the only way you can check it see ideally all these sites they are mandatorily supposed to disclose their license status on their terms and conditions privacy policies on their entire uh, uh you could say legal documentation online they are supposed to disclose 99.9% websites never disclose this. so there yes you are a bit in the dark on your own where uh, you know if they are not disclosing which ideally and legally they have to uh there a uh, user can get into trouble if he doesn't proactively take his own due diligence to find out okay great thanks while we wait for another one if it's coming up i have some question in mind uh puneet um this is online gaming gambling we are talking about so does it act of india or the gdpr of eu become applicable to these companies or how, how do how do we see that see all of these are applicable to any organization which is collecting your personal data today if you log into a portal let's say an e-commerce portal and you buy a, a, a bread it the same thing the same amount of personal data that you are sharing the same way you are also sharing data your name email id etc with an organization for online gambling so wherever you are sharing your personal data the compliance is coming to play that is without doubt they need to they need to follow this yes it act of india as well as gdpr yes, GDPR. yes. okay great thanks we see another question what is the liability of the organization in case of loss of life for instance the pubg case Pub well the liability is huge especially if they have not had a good amount of compliance so let's say if you have games which have violence they have any form of uh, illegal content which can be provocative uh, the liability is a lot in india also at this point of time where it can be considered as games which are actually instigating triggering people to commit uh, activities which are illegal so there there are issues with such games that's one of the key reasons pubg was banned in india and uh, with specific uh, uh, reference to the question yes there is legal recourse for any individual uh, in such a situation and there is a liability which is there uh, not just under the information technology act but under the indian penal code also because it it involves lo loss of life okay okay thank you very much any more questions priyanka we we'll wait for a few seconds if something else comes to mind or punith closing words from you if you have something else which maybe i didn't ask but we should have discussed because this is a great opportunity today oh uh, well i have almost given uh, everything i could uh, in this short discussion the subject is really huge so as a matter of fact it would take us years of discussion to really come around on to you know how these determinations with respect to a game of luck is done like uh, if i will tell you simply when we are working with any particular client who's launching a game and to determine how much is the percentage of luck it takes multiple all nighters to just kind of figure out on what formula we are going to try to increase the level of skill in that 
so this discussion can go on for years actually it's it's a very very long uh, subject altogether gaming and gambling even the process of licensing what are the parameters the, there are multiple factors and again when once you are looking at it not just from the india perspective from a global perspective if there are nations which uh, legally allow gambling and they have a very different legal framework working in those frameworks as i mentioned to you uh, uh, just to sum up if i would have to say i would say that uh, uh, the need of the r definitely is having certain uh, blanket regulations uh, which can govern this entire subject and uh, uh, education of users users need to be absolutely educated about what they're getting into thank you who would do that punita sorry we have some time i believe there is one more question so i would like to take extra time I'm from sure. you but who would do this when we are saying people need to be educated awareness needs to be I think even the government initiatives, private initiatives. Today, see, we have taken this initiative to educate people about it. So, uh, the more the initiative on this subject, I'm quite sure users will also be well versed to understand uh, uh, what exactly they are indulging in, the risks and uh, the benefits of the same. They can themselves weigh the pros and cons. Why should we weigh, weigh the risk benefit ratio for them? They should weigh it for themselves. They should just make an informed decision by themselves. Right. Good. Uh, thanks just wait for a few moments there was a question which we had covered but because the person has typed in so it's good to talk about that uh, the question is if an online gaming or gambling site has taken the appropriate license but the set game is in gray area in the city where i am playing what is the legal position on that now you yourself have answered that it's a gray area there so if there is a license let's taken in uh, taken in state a you are playing the game in state b where it is illegal most of these online applications are going to make you indemnify them in the terms and conditions where they say that if you don't belong to so and so state you're not going to play the game and if you do play the game then it's at your own risk and tomorrow whatever action can be taken the organization is not responsible okay so i understand it's my risk punit but then yes it doesn't come into light into picture that i was doing this until less for example that crying baby you said whoever has put in some money knowingly and yes. uses then that that's when the crackdown on the organization starts that is when the crackdown on the players starts so still a gray area in that that way also that's exactly what it is oh, great thank you very much punith i think it's time to close then a uh, great discussion i believe this was the can we go for another question please Puneet, can we go for another one? Oh, uh, actually, I think in the paucity of time, if there's just one, we can address that and then the last can... one. Then thank you very much, audience. Just the last <laughs> one. Is there an estimate available of how many organizations in India have hosted online game gambling sites? Ah, uh, there is no such uh, kind of you could say uh, index available where you can have uh, this list provided. Ah, uh, there may be multiple platforms sharing such lists, but if you would say a very Very verified list. There isn't any such list. But then that tells us that for someone, it could be you, me, someone else from the audience, that there is a huge opportunity to do this research and publish the paper. Ah uh, yes. So as a matter of fact, today if you are playing a game, how you are going to find out about their licenses is you will have to really check back and do your own due diligence, which is a very huge activity. There is no repository of this information available. so unless and until the law actually comes about where every organization which is having let's say any online gaming or gambling application has to on their website inform users that where is their license taken from share a copy of the license there is no such law mandating that right now that is where the problem comes the law mandates that you need to make them take an informed decision so what tends to happen is a lot of people play around this whole thing where you know they will say we have the licenses but not share the details of the licenses so many questions that are there so right. the law is not yet punished people for doing that so there is a law that says you need to make people have an informed consent while playing your games but it definitely doesn't say what what should be there in that that's where the entire ambiguity or the gray area comes all right all right great thank you very much then uh, with your permission we will close uh, this was very timely topic i believe punith and uh, we were enlightened by your expert views thank you very much and with I'm that i'm glad to be discussing will, this subject uh, with that i'll uh, put it back to hand it over back to the organizers priyanka uh thank you so much um i agree with mr sood that i think this was a very very timely discussion 
um, while it has still not taken center stage in terms of discussion, in terms of work around policy, work around regulation, but only when we start talking about it will uh, will there be movement in terms of asking the right questions, exactly. uh, uh, questioning whether the existing framework works. If not, then what are the possible solutions? And the more discussions we have around these things, the more solutions will come out of it. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, thank Advocate Puneet Bhuseen for sparing the time to take us through this uh, very, very uh, um, ambiguous topic at this stage, something <laughs> that we will see in the future taking some shape, some clarity. I would also thank Mr. Sood for uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, driving this conversation in the right direction um, and raising the right questions, helping us gain some clarity on where we are today. I would thank also you. like to thank the audience that has joined in for this discussion. It is only a success when we have the audience with us. Uh, and thank this you. is one of the ways of educating users. Uh, so thank you, thank everybody you. who has joined in. And thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you, Janka.